Hello Diary, it's uh, the middle of January 2020 and this is an overview video of the Sonoff RF Bridge 433 MHz variety uh, what it does and why you might be reflashing it so uh, first of all a little story which is that um, we've had the following items in our inventory for, for months now the Sonoff Bridge some um, motion sensors and some door sensors here but I've been a bit busy and not had a chance to do anything with them um, but the uh, the folly of our inaction has been made clear when our neighbour called us recently whilst we were in Switzerland and he said uh, Marcus do you realise your, your garage door is open? I went what? that's impossible he said no it's just open um, what had happened is that uh, most of our machinery in our house is computer controlled and uh, the garage door openers are also computer controlled and uh, somehow a power glitch had decided to open the garage door um, containing a garage full of things to take away so we've been thinking for a long time that one of the things we must really do is get all of this caboodle working um, and make sure we've got some door opening and closing detectors on our garage doors and, and other things we have a variety of security cameras now installed anyway, so I don't think it could even happen today. But what we really want is something cheap and easy to install, which would make sure that when a window or door is opened, we will get a message. And that is what the Sonoff RF bridge here enables you to do. So I'm going to go over the um, actions of the Sonoff RF bridge by, by means of an example of a motion sensor and this diagram here. So. Just to give you the information about what the items are, this is the Sonoff RF bridge, it's about uh, £20. This is one that's been disassembled, uh, which is a very easy job to do. You just take off the four, four rubber feet, behind the four feet are four screws. Uh, you undo those screws and the thing just completely opens up. Um, here's one we haven't disassembled, uh, and it's one that's currently running with a standard EWE Link software. Uh, now the Chinese manufacturers are quite savvy and what they've decided is that they will have a common piece of software which many of these home automation items use. So on your smartphone, um, Android or iOS if you must, you can install the EWE Link application and then you can buy a whole different set of sensors and they all work with that one application which is kind of handy. So what I'm going to show you on this piece of paper is the flow of what happens when motion gets detected on, say, one of these sensors here. Um, and would you believe a message is going all the way to China and coming back again? So let's see how it would work. So here's the motion sensor, that's one of these devices here. This is plugged in and working. It works on the 433 MHz bandwidth. By the way, all these home sensors tend to work on the 433 MHz bandwidth. It's got longer range and lower power requirements than a higher frequency such as a 2.4 GHz or 5 GHz Wi-Fi. You can get a few devices these days which for ease of configuration work on, on a Wi-Fi basis. For example, many of your, your lights that may be Alexa controllable might actually have their Wi-Fi installed inside of them. But it's, it's a much more power hungry situation and if you've got door sensors or window sensors then you tend to stick with this frequency. Anyway, enough of that aside. Here's the motion sensor. It runs on 43 megahertz. So you uh, you put this somewhere and it, it triggers. What happens? Well this is sending a signal to this Sonoff RF box which is here. So the Sonoff RF bridge takes the inbound 43 megahertz signal which you've previously configured so you, you pair one or more devices to this guy here and then this sends a message over Wi-Fi so this is configured to one or more 433 sensors and also to your IoT network so in our secure home network we've got a what we call the IoT network which is a network purely for home automation so all of our servers, all of our laptops are not on this network, this is one network purely for IoT so if anything horrible here happens, anything gets hacked it's going to be stopped by this firewall, or in fact there's several other firewalls, but there's just pointing out to you that this is on an isolated network. So PRRF's motion sensor talks to RF bridge. RF bridge is configured to talk via a Wi-Fi connection. You can see there's only a power connection here. To the 
IoT network, uh, in, that, in this case Wi-Fi, receiving Wi-Fi device, that goes through the firewall, through our home infrastructure, through our boundary level firewall, and finally to our home, home router, which is just before the internet connection. So then it shoots out a fiber line out to the internet. So this message flow continues, and it, this device then communicates with the EWE Link server in China, saying, oh, there's been a bit of motion. Meanwhile, I've got a smartphone with the EWE Link application installed. It's running in the background, and over cellular radio, I believe the way it's going to work is it's probably going to perform, maintain a persistent uh, IP connection to the server in China. So it, make, it maintains an outbound link to here continuously. So what happens when this gets a message, it goes, aha, I better tell um, Marcus that there's been some motion. So it sends a message all the way back from China through the internet to, through to my cell tower, to, to my smartphone, and my smartphone gets an alert. So you can see it's kind of a, a crazily long information flow, and plus, one of the things you may or may not be happy with is the fact that um, the information is being stored on a server in China. And it would be certainly more efficient if all this was done in the home. So, how is that going to be done? Well, there's a now a fairly infamous bit of software called um, Tasmota, and Tasmota is a piece of software that can be used to sit on these devices. And, and when it sits on these devices, you can use something like a Home Assistant or Demotic or Samsung Smart Things to talk directly to these devices. So that's what we plan to do. We plan to take this device apart. You can see that here. We need to use this device here plugged into a laptop. We're going to find the pin pinouts, which we've done here. So we've got three volts, receive, transmit and ground. We're going to connect this guy into here. We're going to connect this to a laptop. With some easy flashing software, we're going to get the Tasmota software, which is stored on GitHub. And we're going to flash that through to this device. This is then going to be running the Tasmota software, uh, which is nothing to do with the EW link. And then that's going to talk to a server inside of our home. So we have some home automation servers, obviously in this uh, IoT network, which maintain all, all of our home infrastructure. So when we've finished with our goings on, this won't be needed and we'll be using alerts probably from Samsung Smart Things to actually receive um, our, our information. Of course that does come from the cloud but the servers themselves are maintained here. Uh, and again if the alert can go to a server that's sitting here we can then hopefully make some decisions that not be worked out yet but we, we know in Demotic and Smart Things, there's a programming language, so we can say something like, "Hmm, the the door is opened. Uh, it's uh, Saturday evening, but Marcus is in Switzerland, so that's not a good sign. So send him a message, uh, stuff like that." So I hope you found this useful. The items we're going to be using and 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 uh, changing the firmware on are the Sonoff RF bridge, about twenty pounds. These devices are literally a few pounds each. If you if you get them directly from Sonoff which you can do, just go to their IT website, you'll find there's something like five or six dollars, US dollars each, plus shipping for a whole set. So you can get them on Amazon as well for a bit more money, you know, next day delivery. Uh, but if you're buying them in bulk, you can go directly to the, the manufacturer. So that's it really. RF Bridge, fantastically useful device. It converts the 433 megahertz signal of all of these type devices, all these very cheap uh, low power devices to a Wi-Fi signal. It sends that Wi-Fi signal as is standard to the EWLink application and servers which you can monitor from your phone. We plan to do better than that and reflash these devices, uh, this device here, with the Tasmota software. Okay, that's it. There'll be another video on how to actually do the flashing. Thanks for watching.